Greetings, I hope you all are doing well. Uh, my name is Erica Cody. Excuse me. Um, to answer your first question, I define ministry as the manifestation of the work, excuse me, that we promised God that we would do. Um, or in the words of Alex Walker, doing the work our souls must have. And the reason I believe this is because a millennia ago, I believe that we all had a conversation with God. And we told God once we exist, once we came to this realm, that we will fulfill, start, or pick up a specific work. And I think the manifestation of that work is ministry. I would like ministry to grow into multi multicultural spaces and interfaith spaces as well. Um, I don't think that our God is narrow where God would just serve in the Christian context, right? I don't, I don't, I don't believe that. Um, I do not think that ministry has to be institutionalized or, and nor do I think that ministry is something that's very narrow, but a wide gate that many people can walk through and find themselves in if we make the space accessible. So I think that ministry is also centers, uh, is also centered on making spaces accessible for people to fulfill their spiritual needs or whatever needs they come with. Um, as a black millennial woman, to answer your, se your second question, as a black millennial woman, one of the things that I need is space. The reason that I say this is due to um, my mental, uh, one of my mentors informing me that women of color, specifically black women, don't necessarily have a safe uh, a home or a safe space. Um, as I've learned and being in ecclesial settings, uh, women of color do receive discrimination in ecclesial settings and in their personal households. So I would like a space where I'm not ridiculed for being aggressive or militant or too radical. I would like a space where I'm not um, stereo stereotyped um, for who I am or what I am becoming. I would like a space where people don't receive me as a threat. And I would definitely love a space among other black women in which I can feel safe. And for this reason, I have made other spaces a home for me, such as um, attending the Proctor Conference and attending the Womanist Circle. That is one space where when I walk in, I won't be ridiculed. That it's a space, it's a safe space for me to lament there's an opportunity for me to recover there. And it's an opportunity for me to gain more resistance for when I go back into these other spaces that do not receive me well. So as a black millennial woman, I need space. More specifically, I need spaces that are safe. Second, thirdly, to answer your third question, I don't think that I can truly verbalize or track how ministry for black women in the Christian context will expand. I think the expansion will be great and I think that it's going to be extremely diverse. And I think that's a good thing with the level of agency and resistance that black women have. I don't think that we're settling for heteronormative spaces or patriarchal spaces that do not assist us in our calling. I think that black women, that over time in the next five years, there are going to be more spaces for black women to assess, to assess to uh, to access to a system and fulfilling their call or manifesting their work. And I think this is a good thing. And I think it's going to be very broad. Some of them may be in parishes, some of them may be digital, some of them may be in academia settings or nonprofits or in therapeutic settings as well. I think that the diversity of how black women will fulfill their callings will be a great thing. I just don't think I can adequately verbalize it or trace it because I think it's going to move fast and it's going to be more than we think it will be. Um, to answer your fourth question, the reason I think this fellowship would be beneficial to me is due to community and the, and the possibility of building relationships and having um, mentorship as well. As a young black um, millennials, millennial woman, I need mentorship and I need someone who understands what it's like to be in ecclesial spaces and academic spaces and nonprofit, sp and nonprofit spaces as a woman of color. Um, I didn't grow up in a church. I grew up in, my grandmother was my pastor. Her, her living room was my sanctuary. Her altar was my lap. So I didn't really understand the discrimination that women received in ecclesial um, spaces because my grandmother uh, was my spiritual nourishment. I didn't start attending church till I was around 24, 25. So in those spaces, I still wasn't thinking about theology for myself. Um, 
over the past two years before I started seminary and I'm, I'm fulfilling my last year now, those in within these five years is the first time I thought about theology for myself and I finally understood the discrimination that women of color receive. And when I thought about it, after I came into awareness of this discrimination, I looked back and I was like, oh my God, I, these injustices have happened to me. I just didn't know that they were occurring because I thought this was God's will, right? So I think that having other women that have been in my shoes or have been where I'm trying to go now is imperative for my sanity as a black woman that is called to pastor. And as a black woman that is that desires the same gender loving relationship. So I think being in relationship with women that understand where I am and where I'm going is imperative and desperately needed. Thank you all for your time. I hope you all have a good day.